Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Heather Briggs from My Sew Quilty Life and today we are going over our 2024 Year of Sewing block. This is our March block. It is called So Charming and it is so cute. Oh, I love it so much. These are little thimbles. So this month is the, the sewing theme is thimbles and then the month theme is shamrocks, St. Patrick's Day, um, things like that. So I've got some fun little things to decorate the video today. <laughs> Anyways, today we're gonna be diving into this block. Now, if you're new and you're just checking checking this video out, this is my block of the month. It's a year long block of the month called Year of Sewing, 2024 Year of Sewing. And each month I put out a block that is sewing themed with a month theme. So this month again is I think of March, although I kind of think of flowers, but I can't really make a whole entire quilt of just flowers for each month, even though I totally could, I would love to do that. I might have to do that in the future. So even though March, I kind of think of spring and flowers and stuff like that, I always think about St. Patrick's Day, which is why I made this block green and St. Patrick's Day inspired. I hope you do too. That's what I think of when March. So we are on our third block. This one is called So Charming. This pattern can be found in my shop at mysoquiltylife.com under the 2024 Year of Sewing tab. So we do have three blocks out already. We have January, February, and now March. So you should be able to see all three in my shop. Just let me know if you have difficulties finding those. I'm happy to point you in the right direction. So this block is fun because it actually comes with a bonus block. So I really wanted each of these to be completely different. I thought that would be so cool. But then I was like, well, let me keep it simple for you guys and not make it so hard and actually let you decide if you choose to make it more challenging for yourself and change it up. So I did include a fun little bonus block. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Okay, let me look. Let me look and see if I can show you. Let me look in the pattern and see if I can show you. Okay, I will show you right here. All right, are you ready? I'm trying to cover up some of the instructions. It comes with a rainbow thimble. <laughs> what? So cute. Love that. I really want to make it, although I'm not making it for this video. Um, I do plan on making it, and I think it would be su super, super, super cute to do on maybe the back of the quilt or as just like a table runner with all these little thimbles all in one and then maybe do some like dashes for stitches. I think that would be super cute. So I would love to see your block. Don't forget to share when you're making it. It is hashtag so charming block on social media. Don't forget to tag me at my so quilty life. Okay, are you ready to get started? Okay. I hope so, because it's gonna be fun. All right, it's actually pretty easy. It went together super quick, so I hope that you enjoy making this block. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and pre-cut out all of my pieces and put them on my design board. You guys know that I love to use these design boards. Again, it's just foam core with batting hot glue to it, super simple. They do get pretty messy, so sometimes I'll just pick all these off occasionally but I wanted to show you my fabric choices for this block I am using a Bella solid 9900-200 it's an off-white I love using that in a lot of my quilts so I have that for my background I have this little um, black almost grayish black print for my leprechaun hat thimble I thought that would be fun to have like a little leprechaun hat and then a Coriolis print I believe that's from her buttercup buttercup and slate line of fabric this cute little yellow and then i've got some early bird fabric from bonnie and camille and then some favorite things fabric from sherry and chelsea i find it so fascinating that i can go in my stash and mix several different types of collections together to make these blocks it is so much fun doing that so much fun shopping for my stash and playing with what colors work best but you would have never thought to put these colors together but they look so good Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with step number one. And you guys are familiar with my pattern, so you already know what step one is and what I'm gonna say next. But step one is just drawing a diagonal line on the back of fabric C, E, G, and K. Now, I say this every time, I don't use that, I don't use that, I don't do that. <laughs> I use, oh my goodness. I use diagonal seam tape. So I put this on my machine. It comes off, it's kind of like a masking tape. I line the red line up with my needle and I will just, I'll kind of show you if you can see. So if that's my machine, I just line 
my square instead of drawing a line on the back anymore I align my square one of the corners with the red line and the other bottom corner with the line and I just sew that's how I do it now um, to do this step sometimes if my square is much larger I will draw a diagonal line because I don't have enough of this tape on my machine bed but um, this is by this is called diagonal seam tape and it is by cluck cluck so so um, but yes that is what I use now but if you're still not using that all you have to do is have a pencil or a, a friction marker and you'll just take your ruler and draw a diagonal line on the back of all fabric C E, G, and K squares. That is the first step in all of my patterns. I just want you to make sure that you get all of those lines drawn if you prefer to do it that way. Um, and get it out of the way, you know? Just get it out of the way so you don't have to do it later. Okay, so let's move on to step two. Two, we are using our fabric L squares, so these little guys. This is gonna make that shamrock, the little clover. And then we are using three of our k squares so k is that thimble background what we're going to do is we're going to place three fabric k squares on three corners of one fabric l fabric l square like that we're going to sew on our diagonal line and then we're going to trim a quarter inch away from our sewn line and discard and press and we're going to press according to the instructions. I have you pressing these two in towards fabric L and this one out. That is so when all three of these pieces are assembled, your seams nest beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all six of my, all six of my fabric L squares. And then um, I will be right back. Okay, I just got done with step two so here are all my k units right here we got six of them so here are all six of mine we're going to set those aside and we're going to move on to step three so for step three we're using the remaining l squares we're going to make the stem on that little clover and we are going to use our fabric g squares and you should have a line drawn or you use your diagonal seam tape but what we're first going to do is we're going to first place one of the G squares on the top right corner of the L square. You're going to sew on your diagonal line and then you're going to press towards the correct, I think it's towards, yeah, it's towards fabric G. And then you're going to assemble the other fabric G on the other corner and you're going to have a little stem. So I'm going to do that for both of these and I will be right back. Okay, I just got done with the first part of step three. So I combined two steps in this one step. So first we were to attach our fabric G squares, and now we're gonna attach one fabric K square at the bottom right corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll press and I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished with all of step three. So remember there was two steps in one, and here are our L units. So that's just the stem of the clover. So now we're gonna move on to step four and we need three K units and one L unit per clover. And we're gonna arrange it like the diagram says. So you can start to see that come together. Oh, this is gonna be so cute. Okay, so let's see, here we go. Here we go and there we go. Okay, so I'm going to assemble those together. And in my instructions, I have little arrows with numbers. That tells you what order you are to assemble as well as what order you're pressing. So follow those arrows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this step and I will be right back. Okay, so I just finished up with step four and I have my two clover units. Those turned out really good. I'm really, really happy with where my seams meet up. Everything matches great. So we're gonna move on to step five. So for step five, we need our clover units. We need fabric I and fabric H. What we're going to do is we are going to assemble our fabric I rectangles to the sides of our clover unit. Then we're gonna press toward fabric I 
Next, we're going to, after we've done that, we're going to assemble our fabric H to the top and bottom and press towards fabric H. So I will do that, and when I come back, we'll move on to step six. Okay, I just finished up with step five, so here are my H units. We're now gonna move on to step six. So for step six, we are just assembling our fabric C squares to the top corners of our H unit. And then you're gonna trim a quarter inch away, just like it says in the instructions, press, and then I will be right back. Okay, I just finished with step six. This creates the top of our cute little thimble. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach fabric D to the sides of our thimble top unit like this and you're going to press towards fabric d so i will do that and i will be right back okay i just got done with step seven so i assembled my fabric d's to my thimble top unit now we're going to put those to the side and we are going to create our bottom of our thimble so we need fabric m rectangles and we need fabric e squares and what we're going to do is we are just going to assemble fabric e squares to the top of our fabric M. Now you will press towards, towards fabric M on these so that these will nest right here. Because we press towards fabric D here, we wanna press towards fabric M here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick and then we will assemble our clover thimble unit. Okay, I just assembled my fabric E squares to the top of fabric M. And now I'm gonna move on to step nine. So for step nine, you just need two. We went ahead and made all four so we don't have to repeat this step later, but we just need two. And what we're gonna do is just assemble our cute little clover thimble unit. And you wanna make sure that your seams nest up right here on both sides. It's kind of similar to us making the spools last year. You just wanna make sure that those line up so you don't have a a piece of fabric going too far one way and then you'll see it. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead, in a perfect world, you would just put this on and everything would line up. And it might, it honestly might. I'm getting better at what I do nowadays, so it probably does. But I will go ahead, yeah, that actually did. <laughs> so I will go ahead and pin that part and I'll stitch that little part. Then I will go ahead after that's been stitched and I will move this side and get it situated correctly and then stitch that. And then if any was excess over, I will stretch it just a little bit so that these at least line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these and I will be right back. Okay, so here we have our clover thimble units and you will have two. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to step 10. So we're gonna start making the leprechauns hat buckle. So what we're going to need is our fabric P, Q, and O rectangles. P, Q, and O. And P goes on top and bottom. Q goes on the outsides and O goes on the middle. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to attach our fabric O rectangles to our fabric Q and press according to the instructions. Then after we've pressed, we're gonna assemble our fabric P to the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, I just finished with step 10. So here we have our two O units. Now we're gonna just do the little black part of the hat. So you're gonna need for step 11, you're gonna need your fabric N and your fabric J rectangles. And all you're gonna do is assemble fabric in to fabric J, just like that. And you're gonna press according to the instructions and then I will go ahead and do that and be right back. Okay, I just finished with step 11. So here we have our in units. So now we're gonna put together the thimble top unit. So what we need is our fabric F rectangles. So we have our fabric F rectangles we need our o unit right here in the middle and then on each side we need our n units so you're going to assemble these first and press and then you're going to assemble the f rectangle to the top so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i will be right back 
Okay, so now I just finished step 12 and we're gonna move on to step 13. So for step 13, we're just assembling our fabric C to the tops. And then I also, while I'm at the machine, just to kind of make steps go a little faster, I like to do this a lot of times when I'm piecing. Any steps I can combine, I will. So after I do that, I'm then gonna assemble fabrics D, fabric D rectangles to the sides for step 14. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, I just finished with step 13 and 14. So for step 13, we assembled our fabric C squares on the top corners and then for for step 14, we assembled our fabric D. So now we are just going to assemble our fabric M unit again, just like we did. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will start assembling the block together. Okay, I just finished with step 15. Here are our, our, here are our, oh my gosh, I can never talk when I'm doing videos. Here are our, here are our. <laughs> Buckle thimble units. Gosh, that's a tongue twister. Okay, so now we have our clovers and our buckles. So now we're gonna put it all together. We need our fabric, our, not our fabric. We need our fabric, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna get it together one of these days. Okay, so we need our fabric B and our fabric A. So fabric B will go in between these two here and these two here like this and then fabric a will go in the middle and i cut this a little longer than i needed because i like to trim down a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and do that just make sure see look i've already i was about to say just make sure that you have them in the right spot i'm sure some of you guys were screaming at the camera no heather it's wrong don't sew it so now i have it correct right clover clover buckle buckle okay we're good so i'm going to assemble fabric b to this side and fabric B to these. And then I'm gonna assemble fabric A right down the middle for step 17 and 18 to finish the block off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, so here is my block. It turned out so, so, so cute. I really love this theme so much. This, the year of sewing that we're doing this year has been so much fun. We've done bobbins, we've done sewing machines with hearts, we've done shamrocks and clovers with Thimbles, and I actually really think thimbles are super cute. So when I thought of the March theme, I was thinking, you know, what could I do? And I was definitely like thimbles for sure with little clovers. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to get your pattern. You can get this at mysoquiltylife.com. If you pre-ordered the blocks, you should have received this pattern to download in your email. But this can be found again at mysoquiltylife.com under the 2024 Year of Sewing Block of the Month. So now we have our March block. We have our February block. Oh, I love this one so much. And we have our January block. Any guesses on what the April block will be? Okay, I will give you a hint. It has something to do with what we did last year. And it, okay, I'll just tell you. Well, not everything. I'll tell you some of it. So it's going to be a spool. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to comment below if you are sewing along. So thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.